Welcome back, Smite fans. Unfortunately, the rest of the game for the first game of the finals is not able to be replayed. As it left, we saw some aggression coming out from feeling pumped. They ended up pushing down the left-hand Phoenix and the mid-Phoenix of Leftovers. Ultimately, Leftovers were able to pick the fight and run straight down the mid where Cherio had already destroyed the Phoenix and were able to take the game. It was only about two minutes of the match that was unable to be seen. Unfortunately, it was a very big portion because it was the win. So right now, Leftovers are up 1-0 over Feeling Pumped. Again, I'm Gormizer. With me is Aggro, and we're here to bring you Game 2. This time, Feeling Pumped is taking on the order side. Hopefully all of game two this time around. Uh, feels bad, man, that we don't get to see a really cool end, but it sounded like the same problems that plagued feeling pumped in that game of getting split up and, and being divided in their team fight is what ultimately led to their downfall. So now they've got their backs up against the wall. They have to win the next yes. two to uh, to take home the title here of the EU Eager Saturnalia tournament. So we've seen it a few times, and... Jingwei being taken off the board isn't anything really too surprising. She's had a lot of prowess in most competitive play lately. She's regarded as easily one of the top ADCs, if not right now at the top. So taking her off the bar board isn't too out of the ordinary. No, not at all. Doesn't uh, doesn't really surprise me there. Uh, Jingwei, very, very strong. Again, Nike ban coming out from leftovers this time around, and uh, no surprise should be there either. I mean, this is a god that, that Twig looked very comfortable on. Twig did not have the greatest Erlongshan game last time, so if you can keep him on things that aren't uh, that, that he hasn't looked great on, it's, a, it's an easy recipe for success. These look just like the bans we just saw last game, and I think it's actually on the exact same teams as well. Freya and Thanatos being taken off now. Freya, again, she's just very, very strong, very potent. You can even, like, if you leave her alone, she's just going to come out of nowhere and demolish you. Even if you try to shut her down, she has, like, the, the ability to just kind of get some items online, and then she's still going to hit you really hard. So taking her off, taking off the Thanatos, like you had said last game, that's really to just cut down that early game. Yeah, apparently Captain Twig must like this Thanatos because with the with leftovers banning it two times in a row, that's what that tells me. Uh, Hunbats getting locked in here for the first pick for Twig, and I love this pick. Giving up Terra in this situation, you're taking away Hunbats from Cherio, who had a phenomenal game last time. And for my money, if I have to win a game and Captain Twig's on my team, I want him on Hunbats every single time, especially with Hydra's Lament still being very strong, even after the most recent nerfs. I love this pick for Twig. And after seeing what Cherio was able to do with it last game, knowing that Captain Twig has been able to do the same and a little bit more on this, and like you said, seeing Captain Twig on Hoonbats is definitely something to see, knowing that it has the potential to split the team up, allow you to get more picks, put people in bad positioning, that's going to be very beneficial for feeling pumped. On the other side, though, we see Terra get picked up, and again, Half Devil was on this Terra last game. I assume it's going to go to him again this game. A lot of healing and a lot of control four leftovers yeah really really strong performance from half devil last time around but again even though we saw him play that last time this could be a flex pick for the solo lane this could be no numbers he played a guardian last time no reason he can't play a guardian this time around so uh i like i like the selection and then taking chronos away from demi he had a really strong showing in game one uh i, I like the idea caspanify didn't have a whole lot of an impact from what we saw um, we'll see if he's able to do a little bit more with a later game character instead of that early game Neath. Yeah, he had some good moments, but like you said, overall, he wasn't as impactful. We get to see uh, Isis actually come out for the first time in a while. She's been banned out most of these games today, and she has a relatively large impact. She has a good amount of burst, some good CC, but ultimately it comes down to Circle of Protection, big objective killer, and big teamfight ultimate. Really, really, it, it, it's one of the best team fight ultimates in the game. This is a uh, you do not walk in here or you die sort of circle. Uh, plus, we get healed up. Plus, we take less damage. All these sorts of things that circle of protection can do for you. But for me, it's that long range CC. Nulissa, known for her Isis, very, very strong on this character. But I am kind of surprised we didn't see the Vulcan taken away from Mr. Stefan here because Nulissa's Vulcan is very, very strong. And uh, I really would have liked to see feeling pumped, take that away. Because every time that Mr. Stefan's gotten this Vulcan, he's done phenomenal things on it. Instead, it's left open, and he selects it third for leftovers. And that's going to give them, again, another little bit of an advantage. It's not quite as good as Circle of Protection when it comes to team fights, but it's still a big area and a big amount of damage. Guan Yu being taken off the board, and I appreciate this a lot just because Guan Yu does way more healing than people tend to account for. 
people will go into a fight with him. They'll allow him to run rampant. And then at the end of the game, game you have this, you know, Guan Yu that has 25,000 player healing. You're like, oh, we should have shut that down. Yeah, Guan Yu, got to give some shout outs to my uh, to my console brethren where, uh, where I hail from, at least most recently. Uh, Gu- we recognize that Guan Yu was broken months and months and months ago. <laughs> Finally, the PC side has picked up on it during this last season. And uh, there's the ban. Even though Trick's Tank has his... Uh, has his god locked in on this Kepri. I don't think we'll see any sort of flexibility there. Ducky, known for having an excellent Guan Yu. Uh, I like the ban there. And Naja being taken away. Earlier, there was a player, uh, his name is Gorgon Zola, and I've seen him in Challenges Cup and various ranked games. Like He's excellent at Naja. I haven't seen Cherio pull it out, and I know Cherio's a really strong jungler, but do you feel like this was something that they wanted to target specifically a Cherio, or is this yes. get Naja out of there? Absolutely. Cherio is, for my money, the best Naja in the world right now. Even on his ping, I would take Cherio's Naja any time of the day. He, this is the god that he made his name for himself on. Uh, I, I love I love the band there. That's definitely knowing the, the god pool that Cherio has. We saw him pulled out at Super Regionals. We saw him pulled out at the group stages. Uh, their win rate with Naja during the online portion, or the, the ban rate for, for Naja during the online stages, even though the, his team, Sanguine, didn't win a whole lot of games, uh, Naja was being banned against them consistently just because of that threat that Cherio can have on that god. The other two bans being picked up, Athena, Tyr. Tyr being taken away, not letting Ducky have that one again. But Athena was really a shot, I want to guess, to not let no numbers have that go to the solo lane because once Terra was locked in, I feel like they should recognize, you know, Half Devil played that last game while has potential in the solo lane. Not something I would expect coming out of it, but it still had that potential. And uh, Airlang being picked up. Well, Cherio can also play the Athena. He oh, likes yeah. to play these Guardian jungles, and it could still go solo. Athena, cool. just a flex right there. Terra, you don't know where she's going to go. Athena could go a bunch of different places. You're kind of covering a lot of bases with that Athena ban. Robin being picked up this time for Ducky. We've seen a lot less Robin as of late. Just doesn't bring that same sort of pressure that uh, that he used to, at least, in that lane. So we'll have to see how Ducky does. Kind of surprised that we don't see him go for his signature Osiris. I mean, if you want to pressure God in the solo lane and you're Ducky, I would have figured it would have been Osiris. Instead, it's, uh, it's the Robin, same sort of vein, just a little bit different as far as using your auto attacks and your short-range abilities to slow more than your long-range poke on the, on the side of Osiris. Demi going to be picking up Soul here. More than likely going there just because Isis going in the mid lane. Having a magical ADC on both teams this time is going to be a little bit more interesting. Soul has a lot of burst damage, and obviously her strongest feature, I would say, is her ability to just immune everything. Get out of jail free card. As long as you're able to hit that ability fast enough, you can get away from it. And uh, Thor going to be picked up, so Cherio. On the Thor. We'll, we'll have to see how it goes. I, I, I would have kind of expected, I thought that a... Uh... Some sort of magical guardian jungler would have been good, but then they they had the the magical ADC as well as the guardian, so that might have been a little bit too magic heavy. So he does go for the traditional assassin, and Cherio had a phenomenal game on Thor during Super Regional, so we know he could play it on LAN. We'll see how he does online, where the ping that he plays with could come into a factor. But overall, looking at the team compositions here, I really like the the draft that feeling pumped has gotten for themselves this time around they put in, they put twig on one of his best gods they've got pressure in the solo lane they've got pressure in the mid lane with nulissa they've got pressure in the duo lane with kepri soul those should be able to out push that terra chronos uh I, I really like this early pressure draft that pumped has gone for here and there's only one way for them to see if they've got what they need to go forward right now leftovers with the 1-0 lead they only need one more game to go for it, so we'll hop into the game. Feeling pumped, have to get the reverse sweep. They need to get essentially a 2-0 for the next two games in order to find themselves in that first seed, their first place spot and getting a nice cash prize right into their pockets. So it's going to be interesting. Like you had just said, they have a really good comp on feeling pumped, but we saw leftovers be very dominant last game. It's really going to be up to, I feel, I'm going to put a lot of pressure onto Captain Twig and Nulissa for their team fight ultimates. 
Yeah, I agree with that. They're definitely the team fight potential for feeling pumped composition is so much better than it was last time. Last time their composition was very, we're going to find you in the jungle, we're going to kill you, and then we're going to sustain through any damage that the rest of your team's going to do to us, and then we'll take objectives off of that. This time it's much more team fight oriented. The problem is that Leftovers also have a team fight composition, and Leftovers looked to team fight very well last game. They, they looked like a cohesive unit, which is, you know, for a ragtag group of, you know, players just coming together for this tournament that you guys are putting together that's kind of rare you don't really expect a whole lot of team play you expect more individual sort of play styles and that's the kind of play style that feeling pumped was trying to play last time around didn't work out so let's see if they can adapt and play like leftovers played last time i'm kind of excited because this game we don't have any wraths all across the board so that means that objectives are going to be a little bit more likely to be taken away with Nulissa, with Vulcan on the other side. I feel like we have more potential to see like a Gold Fury steal a Strix tank. Gonna get very aggressive early on, but with Kronos there being able to stop time, it's not gonna be too much. Yeah, that's the sort of push that you expect out of Kepri and Soul in the duo lane early on. On the right-hand side, it looks like uh, Cherry on Mr. Stefan going to be able to split mid camps, but instead, usually the team that get the mid jungle combo that gets the right-hand mid harpies is able to go for the fire gremlins there, but it was actually no numbers who got pressure in that lane, able to go ahead and pick those up. So no advantage to picking up those right side mid harpies, and instead it's no numbers who has a bit of an advantage in that solo lane. So Ducky kind of suffering early on in his solo lane, you know, having this Raven, you were mentioning that you would have maybe preferred to see Osiris. Tyr was obviously taken off the board from him, so he wasn't able to pull that one out. But is there a distinct advantage? Erlang does have a relatively stronger game than we'll see out of Raven. But yes. later in the game, do either of them have a better feel? Yeah, absolutely. I would much rather have an Erlong Shen on my team late game <laughs> than a Robin, just because of that CC potential that uh, you really don't have out of the Robin. Half Devil going to get pulled a little bit of extra poke on this left-hand side, basically continuing the story we saw earlier on. But yeah, Ducky really needs to make his impact in the mid-game before Mr. Stefan can get a Winged Blade online or a Dynasty Plate Helm. Seeing Mr. Stefan go for Dynasty Plate Helm third item means that Ducky could make an earlier rotation and have that big impact. A lot of times the early rotations from solo laners aren't quite as impactful just because most mid mages are picking up that Dynasty Plate Helm really, really early on. But uh, with Mr. Stefan really electing to go for this Doom Orb every single time, again, he's got the Lost Artifact. I expect to see him go for the exact same thing again. Uh, it, it could be a little bit more impactful to have Ducky come, er uh, Ducky come early. Especially because being able to shut him down, Doom Orb just by itself gives some pretty great stats across it. But once he starts stacking that up, once he has up to 50 stacks, he becomes a very large threat. And I feel like last game he kind of was allowed to run rampant. He was able to hit meatballs and sit in the back line where you would want Vulcan to be. But for the most part, he was uncontested. No one ever really got back there. And every now and then Captain Twig could pick him off. But for the most part, Leftovers had that cohesion as a team to kind of keep him protected. It, but this this time around, the, the dive is going to be a little bit easier, I think, with the Kepri, with the Soul, who can really kind of hold their own on the backside and allow and be the ones to protect Nulissa. It's going to be Ducky, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be Isis, it's going to be able to throw those long range spirit balls, and of course Captain Twig jumping into the back line, separating the team with Fear No Evil. If he can keep Mr. Stefan away from his that his front line peelers, uh, it'll be a much easier time for them to shut down that Doom Orb like you were talking about. So Trix Tank and Demi just showing off how great it is to know the timers in the game they were waiting for the red buff of leftovers right as it was spawning up able to steal that away with nobody noticing and nobody knowing for the better so leftovers falling a little bit behind they lose some gold out of their jungle but tricks ain't gonna get caught out the minute he walks in the lane yeah it gets rooted there a couple autos coming in from Kispanify, but no real damage, and uh, Trix is going to be just fine with that. Going to be able to heal up thanks to that Watcher's Gift passive as well as his last health potion that he pops right there. So the pressure that I was talking about, the pressure across all three lanes, has really paid dividends thus far for Feeling Pumped. But Mr. Stefan's going to make the rotation here as the boars are being contested. This could be a little bit too much. The Trix tank playing very aggressive. He actually does turn right back around. They're here to wait, and the fight is going on. Captain Twig trying to accomplish anything, but... It seems like Leftovers is just going to back away. They don't want to get too overexcited. And I think they recognize that right now, Demi, Trix Tank, Captain Twig, it's a little bit too much for them to fight into. Exactly. You don't want to be fighting into that. Plus, as soon as that Terra's Blessing was used, you saw how fast 
feeling pumped, was just like, okay, you guys, uh, we got that, we're out. That is a very long cooldown now, around 100 seconds until that's back up uh, after the recent changes. So you've got a pretty large window to be aggressive while that Terra's Blessing is down across the map, because even if Terra isn't there, that global ultimate is just oh so impactful. It's very difficult to kill someone who has those uh, stones floating around them. Captain Twig and Cherio fighting it out. A stun going to come down with the wall, but Cherio not enough mana to fight on. And now they're going to go towards Half Devil, but no aggression really coming out. Both of these teams are playing a lot more carefully. Like last game, I was mentioning that throughout the rest of this tournament, we've seen a lot of aggression in the early game. We've seen some invades. We've seen a lot of team fights just happening out of nowhere. Last game, it was kind of slower, but it still picked up after a little bit. This game, both teams are playing a lot more carefully. You're very, very slow thus far, and uh, it's hard to say exactly who that benefits because you've got two late-game Magical ADCs on both ends. You've got the Soul for Dimmy and the Kronos for Kaspanify, and then you've also got uh, you've also got some junglers who can make impacts in the late game as well. Captain Twig is going to do more damage than Cherio in the late stages of the game, but that Tectonic Rift can, can spell the end of a game, basically, if you can find a good one blocking off some members of a team. For me, though, the difference comes down to the middle lane. I would much rather have Mr. Stefan on this Vulcan towards the later stages than an Isis, just because it is easier to confirm damage. You aren't putting yourself out of position. Isis's most damaging ability, outside of her ultimate, of course, is Wing Gust. And if you're if you're trying to hit all four ticks of Wing Gust on someone, you're going to be able to you're going to be in a bad spot most likely. So Vulcan's going to be able to throw out those meatballs from a distance, lay down the turret, kite around that, and of course, the long range ultimate can really make an impact towards the later stages. And accompanying the fact that Leftovers has a lot of CC on their team, Nulissa, if she does get too aggressive, she will pay for it with her life. So at this point, it's really looking at Captain Twig and Trick Tank to really be the front line. Ducky, I feel like, has kind of a hybrid role here on this Robin, just because he won't be able to do quite as much, like you mentioned earlier, as no numbers on this Airlang. But he still kind of has to be there, as I think. No, it didn't get stolen away. I thought Cherio Ooh. had taken that buff. It was so. That, close. that was really close. And Cherio is just, is able to pick up those gremlins, which is good. He's two levels down right now to Captain Twig. Twig, the highest farm in the game. He's jumping aggressively, but no numbers is here. Immediately into the Fear No Evil, trying to create himself a little space. Thor up in the sky, pin a little bit off the mark, and with the rest of uh, feeling pumped around. Cherio de-incentivized for going in there, going back towards a speed buff. Two ultimates down for Fear No Evil and Purification. I'd say that goes the way of Leftovers. Trix Tank going to get caught nice. out, although not going to get the stun. Neither stun is going to connect, and he should just be able to walk out of this. He is falling down lower and lower, but there's Circle of Protection, and that's going to be what saves him. I, I think you were right, though. I think Trix was out. I don't think Nulissa needed to use Circle of Protection there, and that means that uh, you've got a little bit of an opening to not worry about the Gold Fury or anything like that. Cherio has to worry about his positioning right now. Hammers towards the Gold Fury side. Doesn't have speed buff, though. He didn't pick that up. And so now, Dimmy trying to get around the wall was beautiful, though, from Cherio. Make, pinning everyone in those back left harpies. Cherio, he's got nowhere to go. Dimmy or Captain Twig is going to be able to pick him up eventually. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we're there. Hard to happen watching Dimmy just miss auto after auto, but hey, he's a solo laner, man. Like he doesn't worry about range stuff. Okay, all those are easy to hit abilities. And uh, it's actually a really good point because Dimmy not normally in this ADC role, so it's really nice to see him, I guess, push as hard as he have and make it this far. I mean, he's in the finals. The rest of his team earlier actually got wiped out by another ragtag group that leftovers ended up taking out, but knowing that he's made it here. So he gets a little bit of bragging rights no matter what. He made it to the finals over the rest oh, of the yeah. season. He's doing it not only that, but on a role that, while he's obviously going to be comfortable with, he's a pro player, he's really good, it's not one that he's really comfortable with. Well, we actually talked to Demi on our podcast this week. Shout outs to my Hindu Man's podcast, Domination. Go to my Twitter. It's there. You should listen. It's phenomenal. <laughs> Got to plug it, right? I mean, I have to take the opportunity. But we talked to Demi, and we talked about his sort of uh, initiation into the pro scene and how he got to where he is now. And uh, his his first team, he was bouncing around a lot and uh, was, was a substitute for a long time. And he said he loved being a sub. He loved being able to play all these different roles. And he's a very, very flexible player. You can tell that by his god pool. Um, you can tell that by the way he likes to play assassins when he gets the chance in less serious games. He can, uh, he can really play it all. Now, Captain Twig going to be throwing out the Fear No Evil, just bringing us right back into the game. We actually see Vulcan throwing out as much as he can. Cherio going to fall down thanks to Circle of Protection and one final auto from Captain Twig. And that was just a really clean pickup fight from Feeling Pumped.
That was much more team oriented than we saw anything from them last game, basically. Captain Sway again looking very, very strong on the Sunbat. Still top of the gold charts, top in net worth at this stage in the game. Player damage, he's second on his team, right behind Ducky, and you expect Ducky and uh, no numbers to be on top. So, in real damage, Captain Twig's up on top for my money, at least. And that time, uh, just a really great initiation onto Mr. Stefan. Separates him from the team, like we were talking about, forces that purification as well as Cherios, and then circle protection down Cherios charging the ultimate but rooting yourself in place to allow that to charge is never really a good idea uh really really nice team play there coming out of the core 3v3 for feeling pumped and no numbers looking to get caught out here trying to defend the speed buff for his team but not successful and ultimately i mean leftovers want to get out of here but feeling pumped are pushing as hard as they can to try and get this fight i think they're going to start to fall back they don't have circle of protection they don't have fear no evil up quite yet but they are going to just kind of fall back they are being much more aggressive than they were last game, and they are getting better picks because of it. it it's the it's the composition that they've drafted. It's the Hun bats in the jungle that's that's pretty good early in the early mid stages of the game. It's this Nulissa on this Isis instead of that late game uh, Aphrodite. You've got a, a stronger duo lane early on than you had last time around. Overall, basically across the map, you're stronger in almost every single facet. You can make the argument between Tier after the changes and Robin, but. Uh, Ducky's been able to keep no numbers in the lane, which is important. And uh, really, overall, you're right. They've been much more aggressive, and I think it's due down to the composition that they've drafted. Cherio going to bless oh, again. Get caught out. Him, Captain sir. Twig going to catch him right in that hammer. He was so close to being out, but so that far away. Really, really hot play there from Twig. And again, this is, I, for my money, Captain Twig's best god is Hunbats. He's always looked very, very strong on it, and uh, you can see why they're first picking it here. They, you saw them first picking a decent amount on the left-hand side, because Fatify and Dimmy getting into a man fight, and Dimmy's actually going to have to back up a little bit, taking about half his health in poke, has the Radiance to keep him healthy, but with the rotation from Half Devil and Mr. Stefan into this left-hand side jungle, uh, Dimmy's just going to have to hold that L and go back to his force. I'll admit, I was kind of surprised to see Kaspanify go in on that at all, just because the minion wave was there. He knew he was going to take a little bit of extra damage, but... He got the control onto Dimmy, even though the minions were there to hit him. He didn't care. He just kept going. And well, that's that one of the advantages. The best of the engagement. Yeah, that's one of the advantages so, of magical ADCs cool. is that your your abilities will be able to hit the wave and the hunter or your you know your opposing player uh, most of the time. Whereas traditional hunters, you know, that doesn't happen quite as often. You have it's a little bit harder to get one of those that can deal with someone juking inside the minion wave. But Kronos, I mean, he just groups up. All the minions are around Soul, hits them all with three, hits them all with the one, and then you did a ton of damage to your opposing player, and you still uh, and you still cleared the wave at the same time. Right now, Trick's Tank getting caught out, but not nearly as much as last game. On that Kabraken, I feel like he had a lot more aggressive positioning and wasn't quite as tanky as Mr. Stefan. Going to take some damage here. Using the Meatball, nice peel coming out from his team to keep him alive. And it looks like Feeling Pump. They still want to fight, but they're doing it in a brilliant way. They're staying in the back, but Demi getting caught out. The Kepri ultimate will save his life. For now, though, no numbers. Still chasing him down. Root and a nice meatball over the wall. Knocks up Nulissa despite the Sanctuary. Keeping the damage. Nice double spirit ball there. Soul Ultimate comes down. Everyone getting low, but not low enough. It's actually feeling pumped. Losing the first two members. The rewind came through. Kaspanify was so close to death, but getting that rewind allows him to come back. He's now full health, able to help fight his team. But Goldfear is getting low. They're looking for any sort of fight. It's getting very low. Leftover is going to be able to confirm that one. And Captain Twig, Demi, they're just going to have to walk away. Taking a look at the graphs, I mean, that was a big win there. That was over a 2,000 gold lead for Feeling Pump. They'd been in control basically this entire game until that fight went wrong. And it was the rotation from no numbers that was the real difference maker. And the fact that it was they used so much, Feeling Pump used so much to try and make sure Mr. Stefan died, but he had the purification up. He had the Terra's Blessing on him. He was able to kite away that positioning that he's been so on point consistently comes through again for the mid laner from leftovers and they're able to turn it around pick up that gold fury as well as those two kills and all of a sudden the gold lead is has shrunk significantly yeah now sitting at less than a thousand in favor of feeling pumped right now it's looking relatively better for leftovers than it was about two minutes ago Earlier, we were talking about Mr. Stefan building this Doom Orb, and obviously it's a very strong item, especially if you can keep yourself alive, keep yourself at full stacks. Someone else has picked it up, though, because Spainify has this, and Kronos hits hard as it is. Do you think this is a good call, though, because Kronos is more than likely going to be the one who gets caught out a little bit more? 
Yeah, I do like the call, just because it really accelerates you, no pun intended, but actually intended, towards that later stages of the game where Kronos is really, really strong. Plus, you've got the safety with the rewind. Now, no number is going to eat the Fear No Evil on the right-hand side, but he's got Terra's Blessing. He's got his own ultimate damage mitigation coming through. All of a sudden, pop, he's half health, and you're not going to be able to dive him anymore. And we're actually going to see maybe a counter engage as a two-man stun comes out. Half Devil going to catch out Nulissa and Trix Tank, but they know better than to try and fight a 2v3. They're just going to fall back, especially with no numbers at half health. And Jerio, again, Ooh, not even a part of the team fight, pushing down the middle lane. Last time around that Gold Fury, he was the one keeping Ducky in the solo lane. This time, getting some good damage onto that middle lane tower. Might be, might be forced to use the ultimate here, but he does have the speed buff, and Captain Twig does not. So it'll be tough for the monkey to catch up. He won't be able to. Actually, Jerio looks to steal away the... Did he get oh my god, he got it. You got that red buff. That has to feel really bad. And now Trix Tank and Ch Captain Twig trying to chase him down. Half Devil is here. Half Devil with the stun and the root. It actually looks like something can go in on him. Mr. Stefan going to throw out some damage. But ultimately, just not enough. And the rest of Feeling Pumped has shown up. So they're not going to continue that aggression. Jerio is just being a thorn in the side of Feeling Pumped right now. Keeping the soul laner there instead of allowing him to rotate to a Gold Fury fight where it can have a huge impact. Stealing away the red buff, then baiting everyone to chase him. They use a couple ultimate. They aren't able to find anything, but it was very, very close. Cherio not having the same sort of impact that he did last game in terms of damage. In fact, second to lowest in the game right now. But as far as team presence and map presence goes, he's looked very strong yet again. Uh, Twig just lagged. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna call lag for him there. I got, I got his back. It's going through, and now we're gonna see possibly a speed buff stolen away. No numbers. Oh. No, I think Trick Tank was Trick able to get with that with the damage over time. Oh man, it's just like no one. I, if I'm in this game, I'm like, okay, guys, don't start the buff. Wait for them to start it, and then we'll steal it because that's been every single buff so far this game. With the tier one in mid falling down, Trick Tank getting caught out. A stun coming over the wall from Nulissa, but it might not be enough to save him. The circle of protection gets dropped. Kepri is trying to save his own life. If Thor is in the air. Could do anything? No, he's just gonna fall back. He has to. So, so low. Trix Tank able to stay alive. Really great circle of protection there to, to make sure he's okay. Captain Twig pinned in the Gold Fury Pit. Just able to jump out. But it's Ducky, only level 15, trying to fight everyone. He's not as far ahead as you would have liked your soul laner to be. No numbers is where you want to be as a soul laner. Level 17, fighting other level 15s, 14s, things along that nature. You do not want to be the level, the, the basically same level Robin. Unfortunately for no numbers, he did miss the taunt. He's still chasing down Ducky, trying to get anything he can as the fight's going on in the red buff. Gaspanify looking to fall down here. Demi trying his best to hit any auto that he can, and he finally does get it. It's the second time we've seen him do something like that this game, but ultimately he gets the kill, so all that matters is he's got that. He's good. Now Half Devil might not be good. Forced to use the shell. Nulissa out of mana in a bad spot. Is able to find the kill, but not quite enough damage coming out until No Numbers has made this rotation. Perfectly timed silence, though, from Nulissa. Just enough mana to make sure that make transformation doesn't hit her. Blink, fear no evil. Goodbye, Cherio. He just got erased off the board. Fear No Evil being used for that is definitely going to be, I want to say, kind of beneficial for Leftovers, but they have no one to defend here, so they're just going to lose this tower. More than likely, they might be able to push down this tier 2. Nothing's up in the jungle, though, so it's really up to Feeling Pumped as to where they want to spend this time. Gold they, Fury did just respawn, though. Did just respawn, and mm -hmm. so did the cooldown for Nulissa on Circle of Protection. She's got three points in it, sitting level 16. So they could really try and burst this Gold Fury down pretty quickly if they chose to do so. Instead, Captain Twig going to back and just farm up. Nulissa going to secure her own red buff this time, not allowing Cherio to uh, steal it away. All in all, feeling pumped right now, have been able to take back the lead that they sort of lost earlier. It kind of dipped in favor of Leftovers for a little bit there, but... Ultimately, they're now leading six kills to two. They've brought it back up to about 600 gold, which at this point is completely negligible. Anything could go anywhere. Half Devil getting caught out, but a nice knock up from Mr. Stefan should be able to allow him to get out of there. And Trick Stink looks to be aggressive along with Ducky, but there's no one really in a position to be low enough, although Trick Stink is getting melted. Another perfectly timed Spirit Ball from Nulissa, though. Dunk down from Cherio. Look at a Trick's tank. There's the ultimate. Scarab's Blessing on top. One HP. They're all just waiting. Circle of Protection never gets charged. Earthshaker <gasps> over the top. Gonna find the mark. Mr. Stefan on the mark yet again. 
Half Devil is low in the back line. Nulissa looking like the next to fall. Four members of Leftovers going to be able to come down there. Because Spainify getting that. And that is a free ticket to the Gold Fury ride here. We're going to see them turn around. And that is a good ticket back into the game. They've taken the advantage. And that was just beautiful. Watching the Scare's Blessing get thrown out and just seeing Leftovers completely turn around. Every time that, that Trickstank has gotten low, it's been Nulissa laying circle of protection underneath him. And it's worked at times, but it's also been unnecessary at times. We saw it in the middle lane early on in the game. The first circle of protection used wasn't really necessary. That time, committing two ultimates to save your support's life, probably not the play. And then you lose a team fight because of that, because you don't have that circle of protection. Now, a tier two is, is looking being looked at right now by Leftovers. And it's, it looks like it's gonna fall to so much damage. Coming out nice, two-man stun. But Dimmy is able to pick up no numbers, so Feeling Pumped does get something out of it. Sprint is popped. They don't want to let them get away for free. But all the while, again, Cherio, not part of the team fight, split pushing a tower. And it looks like he should be able to get this unless Kaspainify just makes a beeline straight for the tower, but it's not going that way. That's going to be a free tier two on the right-hand side to kind of make up for the one that they just lost in mid. But the Gold Fury Gold is still sitting in favor of Leftovers right now, so they do still have a small advantage, but... A little bit of an advantage is still enough for them to try and push themselves as hard as they can. Cherio, just enough mana to use Mjolnir's attunement to dash out of there. Red buff being stolen away. I like the response from feeling pumped. I love the split push decision from Captain Twig, able to get that tier two tower on the right hand side, like you mentioned, salvaging some 1500 gold for his team, as well as the experience, as well as opening up that side. Now, if they do get, if feeling pumped do get an advantage and they want to look at the fire giant, Leftovers only has the tier two middle lane to run to. Nothing remaining on that right hand side outside of that Phoenix. And then sealing away that red buff as well. What could have gone poorly for feeling pumped instead just kind of breaks even. And if, like we mentioned, both teams have solid late game capability here. If we could see Trix Tank revive someone that gets, you know, all in by a Cherio alt, by a Mr. Stefan alt, then you could really see a term fight, a team fight turn around and feeling pumped's favor. But on the other hand, Leftovers has a ton of late game potential as well. Mr. Stefan can just use those ultimates. He's been so great with them so far today. Uh, no reason to think he's going to be any different moving forward towards the later stages of this game. But you've also got that Kronos. You've got the CC chain capability between No Numbers and Half Devil. And of course, Terra's Blessing. That, uh, all, that ability is just absolutely nuts. It's always going to be having an impact. This is the second game in a row that I've seen a Kronos. Last game it was on Demi, but this game it's actually going to be for Kispainify. But they're picking up this wing blade. Is there any specific reason for that? Because it doesn't necessarily help against Captain Twig or Nulissa, but it's definitely going to be good enough maybe against Ducky. Where is that coming into play? It's great against Ducky. It's great against Demi. I'll hold that thought in the middle lane. It's Captain Twig having to jump away. Terra's Blessing is popped. Ducky just trying to be the bouncer, not letting anyone pass the door, but he's not going past that wall from Cherio. Perfectly timed. Circle protection is down. Earthshaker doesn't do a whole lot thanks to Shell, and it looks like they're going to be able to heal up pretty nicely. Cherio comes crashing down though, and he's gonna try to do his best, but a lot of damage coming out from Demi just going to make this completely turn around. Leftovers had the opportunity to try and change that aggression and turn it in their favor, but Half Devil gonna fall. The first one of the fight, everyone else on Leftovers forced to back away, and that could open up the Fire Giant. Nulissa is low, but she's the only one. The only one tricks. Thinking about it, just going to D ward instead. No, it's going to be feeling pumped, just taking away that speed buff. And that, I like that call because you've got so many people running out of base. You know that you only killed one, even though you feel like you won that team fight pretty handily. Uh, you only got one, and it was only the support. So, you know, you're not going to be able to take a team fight super, super easily after that. I like the decision to split up and farm. Great circle, circle of protection that time from Nulissa. We didn't see Scarab's Blessing and Circle of Protection stacked on top of each other. Instead, she lays it down. The shell was beautifully timed from Trix Tank, taking a lot of damage off of that, uh, off that Earthshaker, really nullifying a lot of that burst damage. And so they're able to turn that fight around very, very quickly. And there's a team play that we wanted to see from Feeling Pumped. We saw it from Leftovers last game. We've seen it from them again this game at times, but it's really been Feeling Pumped looking very strong as a unit. But Cherio looking to get ganked oh, on. Captain he Twig is coming through. He's going into the tower and he's just going to ult, trying his best to get away. Nulissa is waiting in the jungle though, but he's actually going to fling himself towards the mid lane instead. I thought he was going to try to fall back, but really good positioning from Cherio going to allow him to at least get away from that after getting caught out. Trix Tech not liking this positioning though. Way out of, way away from everyone. Scarab's Blessing this time is used. 
And here comes circle of protection again. Just trying to keep him alive. Mr. Stefan's going to be the first one to fall, though. No numbers. Still chasing down the support. While on the left-hand side, Kaspanify just trying to get away. He pops that, too. And he is oh so fast. Thanks to Terra's blessing as well. Jump onto no numbers from Captain Twig. Pin. Knock up. He's out of there. Half Devil slightly getting caught out, does get caught by the stun, and now he's trying his best to get away, falling down slowly but surely, and it looks like he will be caught out. Ducky, Nuissa actually getting credit for that one. Captain Twig trying to turn this around, but he's relatively low. No numbers fighting towards him, but does pick that one up. Now it is just a constant team fight. The stun not oh. going to connect from Nuissa. Wind Gust not going to connect, but Demi finds it, and that is going to be three for one so far. Cherio is here along with Kaspanify. They've got a lot of damage potential, but Trix Tank has arrived yet again. Cherio just able to get out of that route. Kaspanify in trouble in the middle lane. Cherio up in the sky. Kaspanify trying to get the rewind off. Cannot in time. And then a Spirit Ball able to stop Cherio from getting away for now. But nice wall yet again from Cherio looking very comfortable on the store. As far as those wall positioning goes, Mr. Stefan not looking comfortable in the middle lane. Forced to use that sank. Last game, Feeling Pumped looked completely different. Mr. Stefan getting chunked down by that Spirit Ball. Mid Phoenix should fall here. Cherry is trying to do anything he can to try and prevent this, but he's just not strong enough, and he doesn't have enough health to continue this fight, to continue this aggression. And Feeling Pumped are leading the way. They are sitting in the driver's seat, and Leftovers right now, there's stuff they can still do about it. Gold Fury's up, Fire Giant's up. But they just lost that mid Phoenix. They're gonna have to deal with these fire elementals. And that's the thing. Like we, we saw these. We're gonna see these fire, fire minions, minions really pushing down the middle lane here. Yeah. And there's a lot of farm available for feeling pumped as well. You mentioned how much is on the on the table. And the gold fury, the fire giant, lots of buffs respawning. All the buffs for feeling pumped about to come off cooldown, which means that their next team fight's going to be even stronger. It was actually leftovers who had their buffs at that stage in that team fight, and they still lost it. And that's because Mr. Stefan was finally dove by feeling pumped. He's been such a key factor for leftovers that it's about time someone was able to get on top of him and get that pick early on. Trix Tank, what we thought was bad positioning, was really just a bait all along. He was never in any real danger. Is able to get towards the rest of his team. They stack it up. They stack up those defensive ultimates. He's able to survive, and then Mr. Stefan gets picked off, and then from there, the team fight goes all feeling pumps way. I feel like No Numbers hasn't been making the impact that we kind of had implied. You know, having this airling, he's a really strong character, but we haven't really been pointing him out except for most of the time when he's dying. He's been falling a lot more lately. And while he's still doing, you know, some decent damage overall on the grand scheme of things, he's number four on the board. The only people topping him, two of them are on Feeling Pumped and Mr. Stefan sitting on top with that Doom Lord Vulcan. Yeah, no surprise there to see that. Cherio again trying to split push down this left hand side. Twig trying to chase him down. Cherio does have that winged blade. And uh, even with the speed buff, is able to get out of range of that Sacred Monkey. Meanwhile, the Fire Giant being pulled, getting pretty low, about 10, 15% HP. Nulissa forced to use circle protection on herself. Fire Giant still in play. Ducky's looking for it, but it's Earthshaker. He's gonna be able to confirm it. Mr. Stefan secures it for leftovers. Now we're gonna see Scarab's Blessing save Captain Twig, but with five, four members strong right now with Fire Giant buff, this has potential Demi chasing down. No number is gonna get a little bit of a heal with Terra here. It could be enough to control them to keep them down, but Demi and Ducky still chasing. Trick Tank not gonna be able to get the root, but the wall from Cherry is gonna be enough to deter any aggression from feeling pumped. These walls from Cherio, his stat line isn't what you want. It's zero and four, but the walls have been exactly what you want. Uh, really, really strong play there. I love the confidence from leftovers to say, yeah, this this fire giant's up in the air. We're just going to fight it. We're going to take it, and we're going to do our best to, to make sure we win the team fight afterwards. They only lose their seven. four members with fire giant now, four leftovers. The problem is that they have to still deal with these fire waves in the middle lane, and so Demi and the rest of feeling pumped Going to be able to try and sneak away this Gold Fury before the members of Leftovers are able to even sneak, uh, sniff it out. So last game, Feeling Pumped was in a good position. They were very strong. They had a little bit of a lead. And ultimately, Leftovers were able to take that and turn it around. But this game, Feeling Pumped has come out. They've had a lot better team grouping. They've got a much larger lead. How do Leftovers find themselves in a position to come back in this? They do have the Fire Giant, so, I mean, objectives are something that they could look at. But with only two towers down, there's a lot of gold missing from the map. There is, and, that, and that's true. But this, tower, this Tier 2 tower on the left-hand side is so low, Leftovers. Uh, Cherio has been trying to get that for what feels like this entire game. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe he could finally be successful with this Fire Giant around his waist. But 
fire is uh, is kind of being wasted right now by the majority of leftovers. They haven't really done anything with it. You can see they're finally starting to group up on this left hand side. It looks like this very low tower is going to be the call about what to group up around. And I like that idea. Cherio a little bit farther ahead than everyone else, but is able to uh, get out of dodge with that wing blade and the hammer. All across the board. Right now, Captain Twig seeming a little bit too aggressive in his positioning, but Pin not going to be able to get him. That could have been a pickup, but unfortunately, no numbers. Not able to find that. His team still looking for anything that they can get just to find themselves a position to kind of stand, find their footing, and put themselves back in this fight. Demi has way too much damage for Mr. Stefano Spanify to handle, though. He is going to get caught out, but no damage being dunked into him. Cherio going up into the air. Going to look for someone. Ducky Force use the ultimate. He's looking at Captain Twig. No purification. No monkey. See you later. Cherio able to find that pick. And now this Fire Giant team, four out of five, have it. And they've got a four on five power play in their favor. Wall going to cut off Demi's escape route and just give him a little bit of poke for the road. Middle Phoenix being looked at right now by Leftovers. They're pushing down very hard. I'm surprised to see Feeling Pump fully on the retreat. Demi going to get stunned out. Meditation was used there just to keep him as healthy as possible. Circle of Protection does get dropped down, but they're getting caught out. Demi getting really low. Nulissa very low, and no numbers going into the backline. Cherio going to pick up Demi, and now Nulissa looking to fall, but Scarab's Blessing going to be able to turn that aggression and turn it right back to the Phoenixes. Solid Scarab's Blessing there from Trix Tank keeps his mid laner alive. And if Nulissa falls there, we could be looking at an opportunity to end for leftovers. But Trix coming up clutch with that Kepri ultimate. Tier 2 tower on the left hand side finally falls. Cherio finally gets what he came for this game. He's happy. He can go home. I like the positioning. I like that Feeling Pump decided to hang back under the Phoenix instead of trying to defend that tower. It was gone. It was dead to right. So right now they have to defend this. Fear No Evil going to come down. Cherio actually makes it into the air, and now he could come crashing down. That is going to be some CC. He goes into the back line. He's looking for anything, but he actually just runs away. Spirit Ball not quite fast enough to catch no numbers. Obey does not, or excuse, I just saw the, the clan tag there. T Twig doesn't want to let it go. No numbers. Has that ultimate thanks to his ult. Uh, the heal thanks to his ultimate, rather. Spirit Ball is finally going to hit the mark. New Lissa able to find it. Oh, that damage from Earthshaker, though. Now we're going to see New Lissa fall. We're going to see Captain Twig fall, and they're trying to turn this around. Ducky is alive, but he does turn around and pick up Cherio. He falls, ultimately, and right now they're really low on leftovers. They have Terra to heal up, but... I don't know how this positioning can turn in for this. It looks like they're just going to back away. There's no real reason to go too aggressive. They got the two Phoenixes. They lost a few members. They just need to back and reset. It really, and that was Mr. Stefan just turning that engagement around. It looked like uh, leftovers were on full retreat. Their whole team was kind of low. The rest of Feeling Pumps was looking for it. And then all of a sudden, Nulissa just disappears because of her shaker, along with a backfire combination. Really, really great play again from this Vulcan player in the middle lane, sitting top of the player damage charts right now. Almost hitting that 30k mark. Next highest is Demi around 25. And Demi has really been the saving grace thus far, along with Captain Twig. Four feeling pumped. Between the two of them, they've got 10 of the 15 kills for the blue side. They're able to try and uh, keep themselves in this game. But the later this game gets, the more damage those Vulcan ultimates are doing. Along with the Kronos from Caspanify, it's difficult to deal with all the, the magical damage that Leftovers is putting out. So Fire Giant just came back up across the map. Mr. Stefan now has not only the fully stacked Doom Orb, he has a Rod of Tahuti, and he has a Soul Reaver. Anyone who can get hit by pretty much anything he throws out, but mainly this ultimate, will more than likely get erased, if not taken down very, very low. Leftovers were almost completely out of this fight about five minutes ago. That last turnaround was able to get it, and they just got a Fire Giant for free. No, nothing to do there for feeling pumped because they have the two hardest phoenixes to defend. Mostly that left-hand side one, but the middle one as well. Tricks blocked off yet again by Cherio. Purification is forced, though, thanks to the abduct. That's really big because now Captain Twig has Fear No Evil and he can make plays with it. Now, Captain Twig taking a little bit of damage, but the Tier 2 tower is really the target here. And it looks like Feeling Pump won one last fight as Fear No Evil comes down. Mr. Stefan getting low, and he will be oh. taken down. Captain Twig getting a really large pick there. We see Scarab's Blessing once again, possibly saving Nulissa as Kaspanify getting low. and looks like he's going to fall down, and this is the team fight that Feeling Pump won. Huge crit coming out of Twig is able to find Mr. Stefan. And then, what do you know? Mr. Stefan dies, and Leftovers team fight basically falls apart. Perfectly timed Scarab's Blessing yet again from Trix Tank. I know I've said it like a million times this game, but it's been true. His, his Scarab's Blessing has been really, really solid. That time able to keep Nulissa alive. And yes, 
using Scarab's Blessing when she's at 30% health is keeping her alive against the late game Kronos. That's the exact time you have to use it. Uh, Trix is looking very, very comfortable on this Kepri, a god that he's known for playing. And uh, feeling pumped, not done quite yet. Still fighting back into the Fire Giant. And that was very beneficial because Kaspanify just completely tunnel vision down. He wanted to get the kill on Nulissa. He knew that that would bring his team something after losing Mr. Stefan, but wasn't paying too much to his positioning, and he ended up just surrounded at that point. And no rewind available, so he's just kind of stuck out of position and down. He'll be respawning here in a second, but that allowed Feeling Pump to kind of get the reset on their mind they want. The Phoenixes are coming back up. Left should be coming right up in a second. I think there's maybe one more wave of Fire Minions. No, they've taken care of all the Fire Minions in mid, so that's going to give them a little bit of breathing room. Yeah, that's exactly right. They wanted that reset to clear their minds and to clear their Phoenix and Titan room of Fire Minions. And like you mentioned, middle one is all good now. It's a little weak, sure, but you don't have to worry about those Fire Minions. Two more waves remaining on the left-hand side. And then after that, you're free to fight. You're ready to go. And uh, and anytime there's been an even fight, as long as Mr. Stefan gets picked, then it's been, gone, it's been going well for feeling pumped. Speaking of which, Mr. Stefan just got picked in the Gold Fury. There's no reason to be doing gold there by yourself as Vulcan at 34 minutes with no relics. Uh, rookie mistake there for Mr. Stefan. I think that's happened twice this game where Captain Twig has blinked in on someone and they have just ceased existing in this game. Mr. Stefan was full health and then he was no health. There was no real progression on his health bar. It just fell completely down and that's a large amount of damage off the board for leftovers. Small picks like that are what got feeling pumped in the lead. If they continue that kind of like just pick off whoever's out of position right now if they tried to want to like if they were in position for it Cherio, getting anybody that they can the small picks are going to be what ultimately can lead them to a victory and push this to a game three yeah the good news is that for leftovers at least is that there's nothing on the map that's really worth taking sure gold fury's up but pretty much everyone is full build on both sides so you're not really worried about that gold at this stage in the game fire giant's not up you don't have enough to really push down those towers quite yet at least i'm feeling pumps mine you don't so no siege coming out of them. Kind of surprised we didn't see them try and take down that tier two tower on left, just making that Titan a little bit weaker if they're able to find a couple more picks, make that Titan easier to kill. Uh, but overall, just Mr. Stefan just cannot be there with uh, with both of those relics down, like I mentioned. Not not what you're looking for. And unfortunately, now he's at 17 stacks on his Doom Orb, so his power has taken a huge cut. And it's still going to be enough. He should still be able to hit hard, but he's not going to be able to one, two, spam and hit down New Lissa to death. He's going to have to focus a little bit harder and stay in this back line. Cherio going up into the air. Fear no evils used. No numbers get caught out, but it's not going to be oh! enough. Cherio with a huge stun going to be able to pick up some kills. Scare Blessing saves Captain Twig, but Demi is off the board and Ulyssa is falling low. The circle protector going to buy her some time, but not quite enough. It's Ducky getting chased down by the rest of Leftovers. Mr. Stefan makes up for his transgressions with that ultimate right there, combining with Cherio. That's the power of late game Vulcan. It's going to be three dead. Four feeling pumped. Phoenix is low. It looks like leftovers could actually end the game here, I think. Yeah, they have to go through the mid lane. They have to deal with Captain Twig and Ducky, but Fear No Evil's off the board. Ducky doesn't have his leap. Ducky, really, the only thing about him is going to be the fact that he's tanky. I don't think he has enough damage to really accomplish much. Captain Twig getting chunked down immediately. So now Ducky, the only one left, and that's looking like it should be GG. Leftovers running into the Titan, and Leftovers looking to take the second game and win out the series. Wow, Leftovers. I mean, the team with one SPL player during the last split, it was only Cherio who played in the SPL during Season 3. Un somehow they're able to pull it out over top of all of these teams in Europe. Congratulations, the Leftovers. They're your European champions for the Saturnalia tournament. That was some impressive play throughout the bracket. You can watch Leftovers. I feel like the hardest matches were obviously the finals and the semifinals because the team they went up against before that was the team that beat mostly NRG. It was everyone except for Demi. And they just proved like they deserve that. They played so well. They had a lot of team play and feeling pumped. They controlled it. But overall, that last team fight, they just didn't execute as well as they needed to. It all just came down to the fact that Mr. Stefan hit a huge alt onto like three people. And then how do you win a team fight like that? You, you just can't. Nulissa had to be defensive. I mean, the shell, what you just ne they just never saw it coming. The shell wasn't out. Not able to kind of uh, negate some of that burst damage. You can see Mr. Stefan top of the player damage charts. Like I mentioned, still clearly has to work on a couple things as far as map awareness goes. But overall... Uh, I was very surprised to see him get this Vulcan a second time in this set. 
Uh, I'm after if anyone was watching the earlier sets, I'm surprised he got Vulcan at all after the way he played. The amount of control that he brought with that Thor in the jungle was absolutely top tier. I mean, the 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 walls were phenomenal. The split pushing, pulling people around the map. And then at the end of the game, that ultimate setting up Mr. Stefan, those two working together very, very well. So that is it. That's the finals. Leftovers come out on top. They take the biggest chunk of the cash prize for today's pooling. Obviously, first through fourth are getting cash. Fourth or fifth through eighth are getting some gym prizing. So top eight teams are getting something. And that's for EU. Tomorrow, we will be exploring North America. And I can go ahead and tell you there are a ton of teams signed up. Oh, yeah. I, what, what was it, like 70-plus is, I think, it's, the number I think I it's, yeah, sitting around 72. It is an insane amount. It's going to be it's gonna be so much fun, man. I had so much fun uh, watching this today and then casting those finals. That was, where, that was an awesome set to watch, and uh, I expect NA to live up to what EU just put down today. It's going to be really exciting. And with that, with the tournament being over, of course, if you want to, you can actually hop into Smite right now. It is three times everything rewards for playing the game. And on top of that, if you link your Twitch account right now, tomorrow, you will be able to have a chance at some rewards in the game as you watch the tournament going live once again at 11.30 a.m. EDT. And as it stands, I mean, thanks everyone for watching. Thanks to hi -Rez for having us have this event. Thanks for the Eager for allowing not only the casters and the production to come out here, but for hosting the event and everything about it. It's been really fun. And Agro, I mean, do you have anything else you want to add? No, I mean, I just I second everything you just said. You did a great job there, Gore, of uh, wrapping it all up nicely. And I just I just can't wait for tomorrow, man. It's been so great to actually watch some competitive smite again. I was already so excited for Worlds, but this just doubles my excitement if that was even possible. I can't wait, dude. I can't wait. And, and with that, that'll be it for us. You know, follow everyone on Twitter. Follow the production, the casters, everybody that you can. But as it stands, that will be the end of the tournament for today. Tune in tomorrow for North America.